Welcome to Beyond Belief Paranormal Stories, the podcast that deep dives into the world of the paranormal, the occult, and the unexplained, with your hosts, Kayla and Melissa. Welcome back, everybody. We are Beyond Belief Paranormal Stories, and today we're going to be talking about Ed and Lorraine Warren. Yeah, so we're going to kind of go into a little bit of backstory. Um, we have a visitor. <laughs> um, we're going to go into a little bit of backstory. This is Toph, sorry. Um, she may be making an appearance occasionally. Um, as I was saying, we're going to do a little backstory on Ed and Lorraine. Um, and then kind of get um, into some of their um, investigations. And then their investigations that were related or I guess like the inspiration for a bunch of uh, Hollywood movies. Um, so Ed was born on September 7th in 1926. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lorraine was born on January 31st of 1927. So about six months apart, not too bad. Um, Want to say where they met? <laughs> uh, so they met in um, 1944 um, at a movie theater that Ed worked at as an usher. He used to go to the theater with uh, Lorraine. Used to go to yeah, the theater with her mom, with her mom um, almost all the time, and that's kind of like where they kind of met. And then one day um, he mustered up like the courage to like ask her out on a date, and they've pretty much been like inseparable ever since. Yeah. Fun fact, I met my husband at a movie theater, too. (laughs) Just a little tidbit of information about me. But, yeah, so they started dating. um, And then shortly after, he, um, Ed, when he was 17, enlisted in the Navy. um, And he was in the Navy for, do you remember how long? It wasn't He wasn't in the Navy for very long. Um, I... And correct me if I'm wrong. I want to say about six months. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, about six months. But I'm like, ah, I forget. Yeah. It might not be. It might be more. So, yeah, please correct us if we are wrong, if you guys know. Um, But, yeah, and then there was, like, a tragic event where his ship sank and a bunch of people died. Yeah. So, he was sent home on a survivor's leave, I think is what it was called. Yeah. Um, And then he basically decided that you know life is precious and you're not guaranteed tomorrow so he asked Lorraine to marry him and yeah shortly after yeah they got married before he returned to the navy um and um during the time that he returned to the navy um Lorraine gave birth to their daughter yeah they have one daughter her name is Judy uh and I, she was, she's Still alive today, yeah. marks her 77 years old as of today. Yeah, she was born January 11th of 1947. Um, so, yeah, she's she's still alive. Um, she Her husband actually um, runs, as we're about, we're about to mention, their, their foundation. Not foundation, I guess. Like, um, they're like... Sort of foundation, I guess you would call it. Like, yeah, they made like they founded the New England Society of Psychic Research or NS NESPR, which is basically like a paranormal investigation like um, company or like um, research center. Um, and her and so Judy's husband still runs it today, so it's still around today, and he runs it. His name is Tony Tony Spira. Spera, 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 something like that. Um, Um, yeah, he, he like, it's their kind of like legacy type thing. And he's, he's continuing on their legacy about, um, the paranormal and the investigations and all that kinds of stuff. Yeah. Which is kind of cool that like makes you kind of like wonder exactly like how he got into it. Did he meet Judy and then kind of like learned from her and like, the family kind of a thing or did mm-hmm. he meet the Warrens first because he was part of that like investigative like world and then met Judy as like like happenstance kind of a thing yeah. like it's kind of I'm curious to know more about how they met and how he kind of walked into Judy's world and that kind of thing um 
I wonder too if there's like um like a a podcast from him or some kind of interview from him stating yeah. what came first. Like if he was kind of born with the paranormal or if it if he fell into it through marriage. Yeah. If he if he fell in love with Judy and then learned about it through her and her family. And brought it up as like a career. Yeah. Yeah, so I know um they believe um Ed and Lorraine kind of came up with um their theory, I guess, of like the twenty eight day cycle. Um, which it basically, um, according to them, they believe it takes about 28 days, um, for an investigator to fully pierce the veil so that they can communicate fully with whatever spirit is there, um, without any kind of like barrier and like the, um, like... The veil between the living and the dead is, like, basically, like, non-existent. Um, and they said that the longer you're there, um, the easier it is for you to fully connect. Um, mm-hmm. That being said, though, like, there was nothing ever documented from them yeah. stating anything about that. But there's that new Netflix show called 28, 28 Days Day Cycle. 28 Days Haunted. Yeah, 28 Days Haunted. And Joni, uh, Tony, not Joni, oh my goodness, <laughs> Tony Sparrow is actually in that. Yeah. So he's part of it as, like, I guess kind of, like, the expert. Um, we won't give spoilers away because, like, you know, people might want to still watch it and stuff. But he kind of talks about, like, their legacy and, like, what they believed and that kind of thing to um, kind of give his, like, I guess, like, knowledge and... um history behind behind it um as like a expert panelist on the side type of thing so yeah if you want to go watch it go watch it i suggest you do because it was really good it was yeah we watched the whole we binged it we did binge watch it it was um a very good um series so yeah definitely go and watch that yeah um so yeah um in the in the biography the demonologist um, written by the Warrens, um, written about the Warrens, sorry, um, by Gerald Brittle. Ed is quoted as saying that he spent a week in Enfield, which is one of the um, investigations that we'll kind of deep dive into because it's based on, it has like movies based on it. Yeah. Um, he said, um, I spent a week in Enfield. I thoroughly interviewed all the members of the family separately and together while witnessing the phenom go on around around me in the house of course they haven't spent like they haven't been able to spend like four weeks in any particular location so like in order for them to do that that would be like absolutely crazy because i think they have over ten thousand cases um so like that would take like way too way too long um Mm -hmm. and stuff but I mean, he said he spent a week there and he kind of got to see all the stuff happening and going on and stuff. Um, like that, like, yeah, I think that would be like a lot. Just watching the, the 28 Days Haunted without giving away any spoilers, it seems pretty intense. Like, yeah. I can't imagine spending, so like the whole premise of the show, for those of you who haven't watched it that might be int- interested, is that these investigators go to a specific haunted location and they stay there 28 days. They don't ever leave. They eat there. They sleep there. They investigate there. They investigate. They don't do anything else. So it's not like, you know, the typical um, investigation shows where like they go there for a night and then they stay there for the night and investigate during the night and then they leave the next morning. They're there day in and day out for 28 days. Like, I can't imagine spending a night in a haunted house, like, or a haunted location, like 28. 28 days. Yeah. I think I would be, like, questioning if I had kind of gone a little bit insane. Yeah, like, a little bit, like, was, did, did what actually, like, happen happen, or did I imagine it type yeah. of thing would be kind of where I would be sitting at, like, I don't know. Like, I want to go on investigations, but I'm at, at the same time, I'm, like, do I want to go? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm a little bit scared, but also very intrigued on the whole, like, idea. Yeah, I think, like, 
Um, that would be something that would be really interesting to do maybe in like the future, in like the future for the podcast, Mm -hmm. bring like, I don't know, some kind of like our cell phones or some kind of recording. So we know that the, the Warrens traveled a lot for a lot of their investigations and how many, how many weeks were they home from out of the year? So they would travel for 10 months out of the year, only coming home for one weekend a month. Like, could you imagine only being home for one weekend out of a month? Um, I feel like that, like, it would depend. So, like, if my husband was, you know, hello, yes, I understand you want attention. Yes. <laughs> if my husband was um with me and, you know, I didn't have, like, I don't know how close they were to other family. If they didn't, like, I don't know that there's much about that. Yeah. Um if I didn't have any other family that I'd be like, you know, interested in like visiting or seeing kind of a thing. And I was doing like my life's like work, work, like the thing that I really truly believed that was like my thing to do, like my calling, I guess. I don't think that it would be that hard for me to be away that long. My biggest thing was to think about is Judy. Yeah. Because I don't know whether she was, she tagged along or she stayed home or who she stayed home with. But regardless, no way, no matter how you slice it, that sounds like a very isolating childhood almost Mm -hmm. because you either never see your parents or hardly ever see your parents or you don't really have any solid home base and you can't really make friends. It also makes you wonder too, like what kind of schooling she did. Yeah. Was she homeschooled during all of that time or did she stay back with other family and yeah. like went to regular school like and like normal children do yeah right so I th- to... it would be very hard I think as a child yeah like having your mom and dad constantly gone for 10 months out of the year and only coming home to visit like once every month like that would be extremely hard but I mean at the same time back then things were a little bit different yeah so that wasn't unheard of to have people traveling to do that kind of thing and it wasn't unheard of for you know I mean it was unheard of for people to go around traveling as like paranormal investigators investigators because like they are basically the first like yeah um and stuff but like also being a kid like I mean I don't know how it was back then but like growing up as a kid with like when I grew up kids are really mean Mm-hmm. So, like, if she did stay home and people, as her parents got, like, famous and people found out what her parents did, if they didn't believe in it or they didn't agree with it, I can only imagine, like, how much, like, I don't know, like, ridicule she must have received or, like, bullying mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but then there's the other side of it, right, too. Like, the people who really believe or really are interested in that, like, must have thought she was, like, the coolest person in the world, right? Yeah. That her parents did that. So, it's, like, I don't know. It's a kind of double-edged sword. Like, um, it could could have been either way. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure. I just, yeah. I would almost love to see, to find out if there is anything, like, any interviews or anything about, about her, that. Like, her yeah. upbringing, yeah. The I'm also her. very curious, too, to, like, find out, like, how old was she when she found out what her parents do? Like, did she know right from, like, the get-go? Yeah, or did she, she not know soon. until she was, like, like eight, nine years old? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. when did she find out about the paranormal? Yeah, because, like, that could be pretty scary, like, as a kid, For right? For a child, like, yeah. I mean, I have a two-and-a-half-year-old and a three-and-a-half-year-old, and, I mean, they love the idea of ghosts. <laughs> By that, I mean, like, somebody hiding under, like, a sheet type of thing they yeah. you know they'll go oh ghost and stuff um but like i don't think they, they would fully understand they would fully understand the idea of like ghosts but i think if they were old enough like when they're old enough to i think it would be very scary for them at first mm-hmm. depending on their like experiences with it um cuz like i mean my my two and a half year old scared of what some dinosaur the like, dinosaur toy. Like little dinosaur figurines and stuff. Like we had to tonight like spend, I don't know, 20 minutes trying to get her to like used to the idea that there's these dinosaurs. Trying that are to get her to like pet it. it. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. just. Um, so I feel like that would be kind of like the same idea. But like how do you. 
how do you get someone to be comfortable with that when it's not something they can touch yeah or you know openly feel or you know see even half the time right Mm -hmm. like it's just so hard to really like know how you would teach somebody at certain ages about about that kind of thing but so I'm hoping that we can find some interviews on Judy and hopefully we'll know her side of it her side of it (laughs) you can't drink that that's that's not for you um so Ed did die yes from a heart attack suddenly um he died on August 23rd of 2006 and Lorraine died in her sleep very peacefully, yeah. which I feel like if that's the way I'm going to go, like I would rather, I would rather go yeah. peacefully. Yeah. Um, but she died on April um, 18th. 18th of 2019. So that's quite recent. Yeah, like that makes her like 92. Like that's a pretty yeah. decent life if you ask me. But um, I mean, at the same time, though, it's like when you're like significant other dies so much earlier like that must have been really hard for her like yeah experiencing that like I can't I don't know that would be like the love of your life you know like Mm -hmm. like my grandmother um my grandfather passed away very early Mm -hmm. from leukemia and I know that she didn't like she never remarried she tried dating a couple times but she said it wasn't like it it wasn't for her like her husband was the love of her life and if it wasn't him it was nobody yeah so I'm like I could understand that mm-hmm. from her side of yeah that so I think it's very sweet yeah but like and the, but like for her it must have been pretty hard really hard to, to lose yeah because yeah. like you go every day for however many years without that person who was always by your side kind of a thing and the person that you expected to spend your life with like yeah. you didn't expect him to pass so suddenly. suddenly so so early too like um. And stuff. So, I mean, that, that must have been pretty hard for her as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's basically the, like, synopsis, I guess, of, like, Ed and Lorraine, mm. um, Warren. But, um, like we kind of talked about, we'll be, like, kind of going over, like, their most prolific, like, cases and watch the movies that are, like, that inspired them. Um and like i don't know how to explain this like part of me is looking forward to it only because i think it's going to be absolute chaos because i am absolutely terrified of the idea of it like we were doing a little bit of research on ed and lorraine and i came across like i think it was an apple tv preview for one of the it's, I think it was like the Enfield hauntings or something like that I think it was called we'll end up watching it for the show if we can figure out how we get that because I've never t- done anything on Apple TV mm-hmm. but um I watched a preview and I swear to god like Melissa can like vouch I was watching it and I went nope and I pulled my headphones off and went you need to watch this and I handed it to her because it freaked me right out like, As I sat there, very nonchalant. Yeah, and I like she's the whole just like, thing. Oh, yeah. and I'm like, I oh, couldn't. Yeah. I watched like I watched like I think maybe thirty, not even ten seconds of it. Yeah. And the first time, there was like anything like remotely like I think it was like a rec- like a legit recording from yeah Ed and Lorraine's cases that came across, and it was like a demon talking. Or something was my demon talking through, through one of the child, one of the kids. Yeah, freaked me right out, and it was just in the preview. Yeah, and I was like, "Ah, uh, no, I'm out." And for some of you that don't actually know about it, and some of the videos that they have, um, some of the movies based on mm-hmm. their investigations, there are real recordings from Ed and Lorraine's um, investigations in that movie. Yeah. So the one that we did here was actually Ed, Ed and Lorraine's. Lorraine. Yeah. True recording of that um which that is why I, that I, we saw. I i knew that prior to seeing that so that's partly why i think it freaked me out so much so like i'm really nervous i'm like, really excited i almost feel like it would be a really good thing it, to see if we could come up with oh, you know what we should do mm. should get myself a heart rate monitor Mm. and put it up on the screen so you guys can see my reaction and not just because 
you guys could be like, oh, she's putting it on or whatever. But like, yeah. if you see my heart rate jump, like as much as it probably is going to, you'll know like this is not like it's it's not fake. It's and I'm legit. Yeah. And just saying like, if you see me jump, I'm jumping because she's jumping. I'm not a jumper, no. but she jumps and she scares me. I do. And like, I, I jump over stupid stuff. <laughs> I don't know why. But yeah. I, think- I jump over stupid stuff. Like, I forget what it was, but there was like a loud noise in something we were watching together. It wasn't even a scary thing. It just sort of startled me. And I jumped and then she jumped and she was like, Jesus. Yeah. I think both of us getting a heart rate monitor would be yeah, a I good thing be. to do. Because then you can see like my reactions and like my heart rate go up. And then you can see like if I jump or I do something silly or <clears throat> something, then that can scare her. And yeah. then she, like her heart rate will go up. So I think that'll be something that that we should look into doing. Yeah. And yeah, definitely. So yeah, getting. some of the some of the major movies that we're going to be watching is like the Amityville Horror. Yep. Um, the Haunting. The Haunting in the haunt- Connecticut. Yeah, The Haunting in Haunting in Connecticut. The Conjuring movies. Yep. Annabelle. Yep. Which I am not excited to watch. I am scared of watching that. Okay, here's why. <clears throat> A little backstory about me. Okay. So, part of the reason why I don't like scary movies is because... So, I was adopted, as I mentioned in the first thing. Um, and... This is not the reason I was adopted or anything, but it's probably like, you know, one of the reasons I would say. I was adopted, so I was taken away when I was four, so keep that in mind. At four, I was taken away. And I have vivid memories of watching Chucky prior to being taken away. So I was probably three maybe four just before excuse you all right let's just get comfortable the cats just sort of lounge in here um yeah like three maybe four um so a toddler basically watching chucky and it terrified me to the point where like i don't like dolls i love all the chucky movies i don't even like, I get, like, a visceral reaction when I see Chucky. Like, I want to kick it away. Like, I just, I hate, I hate. It's It freaks me right out. Like, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Like, I just don't. I don't even, like, I have no words because it freaks me out so much. So, in other words, um, comment below if you want to see her reaction to any of the Chucky movies. Yep. That's a thing. Um, but yeah, so that's that's one of the reasons why I don't I'm not looking forward to Annabelle because Annabelle is very much of the same like doll like type doll like things mm-hmm. and stuff. Like um so it'll just be another reason why I want to throw out my kids' dolls, but I can't. <laughs> that reminds me of a story from when I was younger. <laughs> Two things that I hate the most. I hate dolls. Mm-hmm. Like porcelain type dolls mm-hmm. and clowns. And my younger sister used to have this really small porcelain clown. Oh, perfect. The best and of both worlds. <laughs> she she knew that I hated this thing with a freaking passion. So she would every day she would put it in a new place in the house. Mm. And I would walk into that set <laughs> room and it would be sitting there staring at me. Like Elf on the Shelf, almost but exactly like, like but Elf like on the it's shelf. like devilish, like not a happy. Like, this thing stupid. tormented me for months. Mm-hmm. So one day I'm like, I have had enough. So I took the doll, so I mashed the head off of it, oh. threw all the pieces deep all the way down into the garbage, and oh. for years I didn't even tell my sister what happened to it until we were in our like late teenage years oh my goodness and I actually we brought up that story the other day Mm -hmm. when I was talking to her about it she goes she just starts laughing she goes yeah that was so fun tormenting you and I was like that is so mean she's like yeah I did it on purpose of course she did she knew what she was doing yeah and uh yeah so ever since then I was like no I can't do clowns and I can't do porcelain dolls so yeah I have I, I also have like a very similar thing about dolls so I also had a bunch of like 
um, the porcelain, what are they called? Like they're, they're like the ceramic dolls and they like have like ceramic head, ceramic hand, ceramic feet, but like beanbag middle. And then they have like a little stand mm. and they came in boxes like with windows. So you could see them. I think they're them. still porcelain. Is that what? I, I don't think know. so. Like I know they're porcelain, but I thought there was like a different name for them. And they have like different hairstyles and different hair colors and different eye colors. And so I got a bunch of those when I was younger and like for a while, I was like kind of like I was I was afraid of them because of the whole Chucky thing. So like I would try to like put them in like cupboards and stuff. <laughs> like where you can't see them. And I would like tie elastics around them to make sure that they couldn't get out. Or like that was my like little kid, like six year old brain saying like, you can't get out now mm -hmm. um, and stuff because I just did not like the whole idea of of them and I'm pretty sure my mom had them up until like recently and I had to tell her that she could get rid of them because they scared they freaked me out and she was like oh I thought you liked them and I was like oh no sorry I did not <laughs> they were creepy now that you're an adult you can tell her that you don't yeah. like them like it was like they were like they were cute ish if you weren't terrified of dolls but mm -hmm. like I'm terrified of dolls and like they were very pretty but like I can't play with them because they're porcelain I can't I don't like playing with like big dolls like I had Barbies Barbies were okay they were on a different level mm -hmm. but like dolls or like dollies no mm -mm. nope not not having any of it so yeah so these movies are gonna be very interesting I think um, we are planning on trying to watch them kind of like in order of investigations. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll figure out the, the listing on that one. Um, we're hoping to get started on some of these movies mm -hmm. soon and get them up. Um, we're doing <laughs> <laughs> Patreon, right? Like yeah. For so the yeah. Full for the full reaction, they're going to be on Patreon just because YouTube doesn't like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we'll probably do like a little like sneak peek, I guess, on YouTube just so that people can kind of get somewhat of an idea. If they want to see more ridiculousness, they can go to Patreon. Whoops, sorry, Kitty, I scared you. <laughs> um, and stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll have like the episode of like, um, of us like chatting on the pot about the like about the, um, investigation case on youtube and then it'll be like shortly after we'll end up watching the movie post the clip like snippet mm -hmm. on face or oh my gosh facebook what is wrong with my brain derp derp the derp right. moment yeah bloopers <laughs> <laughs> um on um youtube and all the various podcast places we'll put them and then the actual Full reaction will be on Patreon for anyone who is wanting to see that. Um, but yeah, there's also, um, when we were kind of doing research on Ed and Lorraine, we did watch their like, like their um, shock docs, Devil yeah. Road, true story of Ed and Lorraine to kind of get more information about them. Now, is that on Paramount? Oh, or... I don't remember. I think it was just on, excuse you, um, let me click on it, it was, I'm not sure where it was, it was somewhere, um, pretty sure it was either on, um, Paramount or discovery. Prime, Prime, or Prime or Discovery, I can't remember, what I mean, those go ones. find it, <laughs> it was on the Prime TV app, it wasn't Paramount, it was either Prime or or discovery cool yeah. so one of checks those. both of them um if you do want to see it it was a good um yeah it was like quite informational um it had some in some information from judy and tony like a little bit from tony i think as well yeah there was also some um interviews with ed and lorraine themselves um, yeah as well and there was also people who worked with them yes as well people who actually worked with them um Kind of gave them, 
gave like a little interview about how it was working with them and what they learned and that kind of thing and whatnot. I think we're going to have another like little um, visitor. Um, and then one of the other things that we'll probably, hello, um, end up watching. Okay, what's going on here? <laughs> um, one of the other things we'll probably end up watching, like I said, is the Enfield Poltergeist is what it's called on Apple TV. Mm, yep. Um, we also, there's also something else that we were wanting to watch. Um, we might end up also watching the Poltergeist movie because apparently it's actually based on them. We'll do some more research on that yeah. one and then um, go from there. Yeah. And then um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. There's also um, a documentary. Oh, a documentary on either Prime or Discovery about the Amityville horror um, case, which we'll probably end up watching as well, just because then we can kind of get like, hopefully it'll be like a little bit more like real realistic not realistic i mean i guess sort of realistic because like hollywood likes to make things like more big bold and grand or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. um this is simba by the way in case in case you guys see him next time this is simba we have two other cats um but yeah so we'll end up watching that um because hopefully like i said it, it's more like fact-based since it is supposed to be like a docu-series about it and then um which is kind of interesting because that's the one house I saw an interview with, um, that's all read an interview with, um, Lorraine. And she said the one house that she would never return to was the Amityville house. She said she absolutely refuses to ever go there again. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of very intrigued to learn more about that house. Um, and exactly what happened um, full disclosure, Amityville Horror is one movie that a long, long, long time ago I did watch. So, like, I sort of have, I have this thing with movies where I watch them and I forget about them. So, it's like every time I watch them, it's almost like I'm watching them for the first time again. But um, unless it's one that I, like, watch a lot or I've read a book about, mm -hmm. um, like the Harry Potter series, like, I... I've watched so many times and I read the book. So like, I know what happens, but I don't know each individual like, um, thing that like, I just can't like word for word it or anything. Yeah. But so that's kind of the same thing with like the Amy Deville. Like I won't remember exactly what happens. I have a general idea of like the storyline, but that's about it. And I remember in one of the, um, interviews with Ed and Lorraine, Ed mentioned that, during the time that they went and did the Amityville, um, he said when he walked in, he said he could just feel like there were just like thousands of demons already there. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just based on the one family who had, the one guy who shot his family mm -hmm. um, and there was like six murders or whatever, but there had probably been previous murders all along or a well, portal had opened and yeah. there were a lot of demons already in the house and that's so. probably what made made them go crazy the people in the house because like the people like the Lutz family mm -hmm. were affected by the by the demon right yeah so that's probably what the same thing that happened to the guy who killed his family potentially like I'm not 100% sure but I mean if that's the kind of an entity that is in a house and there's multiple of them, like I can only imagine what, how, what that would even feel like. I feel like that house, even though it's probably like um, one that shouldn't be touched kind yeah. of thing, it probably needs to be condemned. That yeah. way no more families can be moved into it. No more mm -hmm. like hauntings or murders yeah. that are happening in that house. Yeah, I think, um, I don't think anyone is living in it. I mean, that's good. I that's... think the person that owns it is, correct me if I'm wrong, we'll, we'll do more research about it anyways, but I think I read that the person that owns it basically refuses to stay there and got it for, like, really cheap. That's, that's kind of fair. Thing. And, um, so I'm hoping that no one else goes and, 
And like lives in it. Lives in it. Cause yeah. like that, that's. It, it could be very dangerous yeah. if there was another family that lives in it. So. And I, yeah, I don't think that it's something that you can cleanse properly with the amount, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, like I said, that's something we'll have to obviously like look into for sure. But, um, question for you, um, out of all of the movies or the cases that you know off the top of your head, um, which one are you most excited to learn about, more about, or potentially watch the movie for, or both? That's a hard one, because like, I have, I've seen all the movies. That's not true. Oh, wait, there's one. What is it? The Conjuring, The Devil, uh, made, the me devil made Me Do It. We have not. So, she has not seen that. That's true. I'm really excited, I guess. Have you seen The Nun? One. Yes, I have. Um, what about I the don't curse? Like it? No. What about the curse of the La Llorona? I am so La, so. La, La. Oh my god! <laughs> I am so sorry. We are butchering this. Please. La La, La Llorona or something yeah. like that. If, um, please correct us on our pronunciation. We apologize. I want to say yes, but I'm not. I can't give you a definite yes. Mm-hmm. It might be something that I have to relook at and tell you. Um, there's a good chance I might not have seen that one, but I have seen. Amethy Vale Horror, I've seen all of The Conjurings, I've seen Annabelle's, I've seen The Nun. What about The Haunting, or The Haunted, or The Haunting in Connecticut? Yes. See, the only one that I 100% know that I have watched years ago was The Amity Vale Horror, mm-hmm. and I don't even know if I watched the original or if I watched the remake. Right. Which is another question. When we're doing the Amityville Horror, do we watch the old one or do we watch the remake? The old one. Okay. We will go with the originals. Mm -hmm. And if we find that it was a success or whatever, we can then later on watch the remake and see what kind of differences that they come up with um, from the original to the remake. Yeah. Is a, I I don't I don't know if I, I so in that being said then I have not seen the original, pretty sure I know I did see the remake. Does it is that the one with Christian Bale? Is that, is that, no, it's not. No, it's not. You're telling me names and all I can I I need faces. <laughs> I need faces. Okay, well yeah I don't think I don't even think it is him though. Now that I'm saying that, um. But I think I have seen, I think it was the remake that I watched. Um, so, yeah, for me, all of these are going to be new. And if there are any movies that we um, haven't mentioned or... Um, or miss. Or well, miss. I guess that hasn't Yeah, been like yet. haven't been me- mentioned or that you think would, that, that are part of like the Ed and Lorraine like universe or whatever you want to call it, if you can call it that. Um, like, let us know and we can... Like, you know, do some research, watch it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Because for the first bit during this podcast is going to be about them and their cases because they're kind of like the forefathers, I guess you want to call it, of the paranormal investigation world because prior to them, it wasn't really talked about because it was very much like kind of a no-no topic. Like, you didn't talk about the paranormal because people would think that you were a little bit off your rocker and... Um, yeah, I feel like, yeah, Ed and Lorraine were one of the first people, like, couples to be like, this is something serious, and this is, like, we need to do something about it, and mm-hmm. so the fact that they've gone out of their way to help people in need, mm-hmm. I find is just amazing. Yeah. Also, side note, if there is any other, um, scary movies, haunted, yeah. paranormal, anything that you want, um... Just comment it below, and uh, we will add it to our list of movies. <laughs> there are tons of paranormal activity movies. I I have seen, I think, the first one I think I did see. Again, a while ago, it'll still, still scare me just as much as probably the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'm the type of person that gets so scared by movies that, as, like, Melissa's kind of 
stated will likely happen, I scare other people. So like an example of this is back when I was in college, I was at home in my apartment watching a movie with my best friend. I think it was like Insidious, but it was like a pirated version of it, which was really awful because whoever pirated it did a really awful job. You couldn't really see anything. So I think, I don't know, I don't know because I've never gone to rewatch it proper, but like I'm because we couldn't see anything, it was absolutely terrifying. And I'm curious to know if it would be as scary if I was able to see everything, but like, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, we're watching it. There's a really scary part where like, um, something terrifying was happening and a door was being opened. Um, and just as that happened, um, my roommate decided to walk in the house and well, she scared the living daylights out of me and my best friend who, who were watching to the point where we screamed on the top of our lungs, which then caused her to flee because she had no idea what was happening. Like, could you just imagine like walking into your house and just having like two people scream at you? Like, yeah, it took her a while to like come back in. Like she went outside and was like, not nah. like we went up there and we were like dying laughing. Like I was like beside myself hysterical because mm -hmm. I thought it was the funniest thing in the whole world. And she was like, that's not cool. And I'm like, well, you scared us. Like I can't help what happens. And she's like, well, you nearly gave me a heart attack. Yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting, but yeah, I haven't really watched any scary movies since then because at that point I kind of decided that maybe it wasn't a good idea. I'm also very excited to see what it'll be like to watch a scary movie with another person mm -hmm. because I I always end up watching movies by myself because most of the people in my family don't like scary movies. Yeah. So I'm usually by myself. So it'll be interesting to see what it'll be like with another person. Yeah, I'm 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 interested to see what it'll be like um because I've never <laughs> Obviously, like, that'd be weird. Watch myself watching a scary movie. Um, and so I think, like, I feel like whenever I watch something scary, I'm, like, the type of person that does this. Like, I hide. So I'm very curious to see how much I actually do that or, you know, how I actually react. Um, because, yeah, like, I've never... It'll just be interesting. Yeah, it'll just yeah. be interesting to see... <laughs> Also, hopefully, hopefully entertaining for you guys, but mm -hmm. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. So, um, after, like she said, after we finished all of like the documentary movies that they made, um, we will start adding other horror and paranormal mm -hmm. movies to the list. Yep. So. And we'll also like, as part of the podcast, like as I'm sure, I think we mentioned in the last little, like very short episode, um, We'll be doing like re like um kind of like research and like stuff about other like paranormal things and like occult objects and and UFOs UFOs anything kind of paranormally or kind of something the unknown the unknown like anything that we're just like what is that like is that something is that not something so if there's any kind of topics you want us to touch on that we haven't um, feel free to write it down below mm -hmm. and we'll definitely put it on the list. Um, like I know one thing I'm kind of really looking forward to learning more about is like Ouija boards because like, I mean, I'm kind she of, she has of an obsession planchets. with planchets. I love it. Okay. I love it. When, um, there's a game that we play that's called phasmophobia. I'm sure some of you have heard of it. Um, but usually in some of the, um, I guess, cases, you call it. Mm -hmm. If there's a Ouija board, she's always got to play with it. Well, you got to talk to it. I can't. I'm not allowed. I break things. You do. And so if you break it, then the then it comes and gets you. Then it hunts and tries to kill you. So, yeah, she's not allowed to touch. Not she's not allowed to touch any of the cursed objects, actually. <laughs> so there's a clip of us playing because I um, was, I guess, like... I streamed on uh, Twitch for a while doing um, scary games, basically. And there's a clip of us, which I can post 
in here. Maybe I'll add it right after this little discussion of um, us playing together. And we're in this like really creepy, um, I guess like it's asylum. a chapel. It's a, yeah. it's a it's a mental institution um, that's like condemned and we're trying to figure out where the ghost is and sh I literally tell her like don't break the mirror and what does she do I broke it she breaks the mirror I did so then we get hunted and at the same time we're cackling because we just can't stop like laughing about the fact that she literally broke the mirror which is another thing that we're going to be doing. We are going to be playing some yep. um, scary ghost spooky, games as well. Um, games. <laughs> and also that will be posted in our YouTube and... Yep. Um, oh, my God. YouTube and Patreon. Yep. So if you'd like to see those. And then there's also a game that I'm going to make Melissa play. Because... So it's called Conrad Stevenson's Paranormal... Private investigator, or something like that, and it's so good, but it's a solo game, which is really funny because, like, when it comes to movies, like, I love scary movies, but when it comes to games, mm. I am a chicken shit. Yeah, they scare me. Yeah, so I'm gonna make her play it because it's a little bit spooky, but it's also like kind of really fun to play. Um, and then we'll also be playing some Demonologist, mm -hmm. some other games, which all of them, by the way, just got their Halloween update. Which we are playing tonight. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that'll be fun because then we can, um, kind of show you, um, kind of the other side of like how we like to spend our time, mm -hmm. um, playing that kind of stuff, um. Yeah, if you want to see all the fun stuff, then stay tuned. And yeah. I think that's, I, th I don't think there's anything else that we need to add. Do you think there's anything else? That I don't think so. We're, I think that I think we've covered pretty all much right. everything. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are Beyond Belief Paranormal Stories. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. All right. Until next time, may the spirits of curiosity guide your path. And I was like so mad because I was like, yeah, this is really garbage. I'm gonna bring the sounds up. No, we're I'll be back. Cut it. Oh, this is garbage. Fuck my life. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I think the last time I went into this one, you guys ended up getting booted and I was in there all by myself. Oh yeah, that that's more than likely what happened. Great. Oh shit. I've always had the power be right there. I don't know where the power is anywhere else. Oh great. Back. Yeah. Problem. Every time I played on this map it's always been It's the mirror. Shit, that's a room. <laughs> oh, that's, that's helpful. <laughs> it could be a hallway too. Hey, there's like cupboards. You want to try it for a bit? There's cupboards. What are you doing, girl? <laughs> Don't look at it too long. Oh, shit! Oh. Now it's gonna kill us! Fuck! <laughs> Sorry. Turn off your light. <laughs> I, <did. laughs> I was 
try to let it go, it wouldn't go out of my hand. Oh shit. We're dead. <laughs> We're so dead. <laughs> right to the fast snow gods that he doesn't find us. Oh shit. Oh god. He's in here with us. If I don't look at him, he won't see me. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I said, you try it because I don't want to break it. And then you're like, here, I'll just look at it. I have no sanity left. <sighs> Trying to let it go, it wouldn't go. Oh, great. All of our hunts now are gonna be sanity level hunts because you fucking broke the goddamn mirror. I think it's done though. Oh, man. Hello, ghost. Are you here? Ah! <laughs> 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 oh my god, did not like that. Oh. Ah, I can't even. Oops, wrong button. Okay, I can't even see. I'm like crying so hard. Oh god. Okay, where did or well, this is gonna be fun now. Are you in here with us, ghost? That's not the right button. <laughs> oh shit! Hide. Fuck my oh, life. <laughs> to do something and then you gotta fucking hide again oh my god tears <laughs> should we try to like escape like run for it <laughs> like i mean like after he's done like you know chasing us down i mean one of us isn't gonna make it but sure i mean one of us might not make it in here oh shit 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 oh Sleep or something. Like, it's not a child! You can't be like, go to sleep! I can. <laughs> okay, let's get the fuck out of here. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh shit, this is the wrong way. Fuck. Oh my god, Kayla. <laughs> The door's locked, the door's locked. For you? Yes, so. Might be done. Try the door. Oh. Oh, 
I'm gonna try and find him. Hello, Becky. Oh. Okay, he's going, she's going the other way. He's a creepy, creepy biz, Nash. Going downstairs. I think she's gone. I'm out. Yeah, me too. I'm following you. So we did a whole That's lot that of no we <laughs> I was out one yeah. one. Woo! No, we oh, didn't even get a chance because oh, we're like, what room is it? And then fucking dude bro here was like, let me just gaze into this <laughs> glorious <laughs> mirror of death. And then I died. And she won't go in there by herself now. <laughs> no. Um, I'm going to say it's a not a heart. thing. Or a revenant. It's not a revenant. Sorry, not, not a thing. Not a revenant. Um, because it wasn't really slow, it was fairly fast, but not like super fast. So other than that, I got nothing. I don't think it's a twins because like when my hunt, well, I don't know, was that the same hunt though? No, all the hunts, they sounded the same. I don't think it's a twin. Um, but other than that, I feel like you could probably just, you know, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And pick it wouldn't have been a Geogen either then because like... Mm -hmm. It didn't come to me. Yeah, I didn't find us, so it's not a Dio. Um, I don't think it's a Han 2 because it didn't get faster at any point in time. Um, I don't... It might be a Phantom. I was going to say, I don't think it's a Phantom, but it was blinking semi-slow, but like I don't know what they consider like slow. So like there's a chance that it's not a Phantom, but I'm not really sure. Yeah. Let's just pick something. Okay. I'm gonna pick um Obake. I don't know. Okay. I picked on Rio. Well, let me pick the O's. Okay. Ready? <laughs> yep. <laughs> what a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> oh, that one's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> we should have just like GTFO'd after the first hunt. Yep. <laughs> oh well. Oh, a bake. It was? Yeah. Fuck yeah! That was the best guess of my life. <laughs> oh, that was, oh shit. Button. I only got $30 for that though. Even <laughs>